So we're now on to episode 26. This is the final dinner party. Yes, we're here, the final dinner party. Now we saw all the couples come in. Yeah, the usual. But did you see the divide? Did you see the divide? We had George and April, Whitney and Matt on one sofa, and then everybody over the other side. Ugh, you could cut the air with a knife in that, in that environment. And to be honest, the divide happened when Zoe and Jenna walked in. Zoe in particular and Matt. Them two are still not in a good place with each other. They're still at loggerheads. Yeah, I, I don't know how long this is going to last, but I can't see these two making up. Well, to be honest, it's more Zoe. We know she's stubborn. She's not budging. She's not budging. And with Zoe behaving the way she's behaving, Matt isn't going to come forward. It's, it's not going to happen. That divide will remain. It's not going to change now. Oh, dear. So that already started the divide within the camp. And then we saw Thomas and Adrian walk in. And you saw Thomas say the party doesn't begin until he arrives. Yes, that's what he said. And with him entering, the group was divided even more. Yes, even more. You could cut the air with a knife in that place. And lastly, we saw Sophie and Jonathan walk in. And again, it was you, if you saw Thomas's face, he wasn't interested. Ever since him and um, Sophie fell out, he's just not going to go there. So that relationship is already frosty with that couple oh god here we go here we go and with that being said you know this dinner party wasn't going to go down well so fast forward to the dinner party well it didn't take long before the honesty box came out yes the honesty box again as we know there's always some sort of drama with these questions and the first question was put to Adrian and Thomas. Their question was, which couples do you think will stay together after the experiment and why? And which couples do you think will split after the experiment and why? Yes, that was their question. And it was Thomas that answered that question. He turned around and said to Jenna and Zoe that he likes them as a couple and he could see them together. Again, he said the same for Shanita and Jordan. I like you two as a couple and I could see you together. And then he stopped there. He had nothing more to say. He didn't want to comment about anybody else. He left it right there. And I thought, oh my God. Thomas, Thomas, you couldn't say anything about the others? No, he virtually dismissed them like they weren't even there. Not interested. Not interested. And with that, we saw Jonathan turn around and say to him, you've always got an input on everyone else's relationship. And then when it comes to yours, you want to take the moral high ground. Like no one could comment on your relationship. So it's one rule for you and then another rule for us. That's really what he was saying. On this occasion, I have to agree with Jonathan. I don't no normally agree with him. I don't. Th there's a lot of things about him. I, I, mm -mm, no, it doesn't work for me. But on this occasion, he had a point. And with Jonathan saying that, we saw, what's his name? George. George turned around to Thomas and told him to, to be quiet, to be quiet. Let him speak, as in Jonathan, let Jonathan speak. Because Thomas kept interrupting him whilst he's trying to put his point across. As usual, Thomas doesn't want to hear anybody. And again, George would try to tell him to shut up, to shut up. Listen, listen, he said. Yeah. And then the rest of the table started to have their little input. So that conversation got a little heated for a moment. We also saw a point where Thomas told, no, Adrian told Thomas to, to calm down. And Thomas says, Please, don't speak to me. Don't speak to me. And I thought, what? Thomas is so rude. He's so rude. And Adrian puts up with this shit. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. 
We also saw when George and Thomas were to and fro with each other. George turned around and called in an effing prick. Yeah, he called in an effing prick. And you saw his wife, what's her name again? April, tried to say, no, George, we're not doing this. You're never going to have to see him again after this. Just calm down. Just calm down. And I get her point. But it was just getting too much for him. He's been wanting to explode from the beginning. Weeks on end, he's having to put up with this entity over here. Yes, Thomas. He's having to put up with his crap. And every dinner party is the Thomas show. But this time round, as April said, you're not going to have to see him again after here. We're not going to have to see him again after this, so let it go. Eventually, the table did calm down. And the next question that was asked was with Shanita and Jordan. And it was Shanita that asked Jordan, when did you first know I was right for you? And his answer to that was virtually when she walked down the aisle. They were able to laugh and joke about the whole situation. And he put her at ease and she put him at ease. Yeah, it was in that moment. He thought, yeah, we're good. We're good. And then... His question to Shanita was, what are you most looking forward to after this experiment? And her answer was really all about the plans they, have, they were making, that they're planning to do, go on trips, meet up weekends, all the relevant stuff to keep the relationship going. Yeah, so that was her answer. The next couple to answer their question was Jenna and Zoe. And it was Jenna that asked Zoe, Will your fear of commitment be our biggest hurdle? Something like that, she said. And when I heard that, I thought, hang on a minute. Commitment? Fear of commitment? Since when have I heard that? Throughout this whole experiment, I don't remember hearing those words about Zoe. That she had a fear of commitment. That's a first. Or did I miss the memo? Did I miss the memo? Anyway, her answer to that was that she's thrown herself into the experiment and she's trying to be vulnerable. That was her answer. Yep. Then when it came to Zoe asking Jenna, it was, what one thing would you change about me? And Jenna's answer to that was, maybe your stubbornness. And Zoe agreed, to be honest. She did agree. She said, I'm working on it. And then Jenna's answer to that was, I can see you're doing that and I feel we'll get over it. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get over that hurdle. And that was it. So moving on. We then saw a small conversation that took place between Thomas and Adrian, Zoe and Jenna. And it was Thomas saying to Zoe and Jenna that you are the most genuine couple in this experiment, as well as Shanita and Jordan. And he wishes them... The absolute best. Yeah, that's what he said. But he didn't include himself and Adrian in this. During that whole dinner party with the questions that had been asked so far, you could see Thomas's face was looking very much like, why has everybody else got this lovey-dovey thing going on and me and Adrian haven't? He was looking around the table looking at everybody, laughing and joking, being touchy-feely with each other, kissing on each other, and just having a nice connection. And he just doesn't have that with Adrian. And then this is what we saw next. I'm looking around the table and I'm seeing it all happy everyone is, and I'm just don't feel like that. This is not where we are now. We're not in love. We're not in love. After that, he turned around and said that he needed to talk to Adrian. They need to have a conversation. Because this isn't going anywhere. We know it. He knows it. We all know it. Except for Adrian. So what we saw next was Thomas say to Adrian, shall we go for a chat? So Adrian agrees to go. And you see them both go outside and sit down and have this chat. You know, in 
changing my mind last week when I wrote leave. It was because it wasn't going any further. I just wanted someone to love me. me and I too. wanted someone to be with me forever. At last week's commitment ceremony, where Adrian got Thomas to change his mind, I knew nothing was going to change. I knew it. I knew it. So here we are. Thomas trying to break it to him, the reason for him saying leave last week. You know, looking around to the other couples and they're being intimate and we're not. And I didn't feel like we can go to the final vows when we've got so much that we still need to work on. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Thomas is very right here. Adrian's just clutching at straws. No, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to prolong it any further. It's been dragging for weeks. So let's let's just let it go. Let's just let it go. You mean the whale to me? Yeah. But just because we love each other doesn't mean we're supposed to be together. You know, I wanted you to know that someone would stick through. I know you did. And I wanted you to know that someone would care and protect you. Do not think I feel all of them things? <sighs> we then saw Adrian break down crying and Thomas console him. Deep down, he knew it wasn't going anywhere. Deep down, he knew it wasn't going anywhere. So you saw these two come back to the table and make an announcement. To cut a long story short, they said to the table that they will not be taking their relationship to the final vows and that they will be bowing out gracefully. Yeah. In hearing this news, some of the table were in condolence with them. The rest of them were not bothered. You saw their faces. They were like grinning behind their glasses of wine thinking, oh, thank God for that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, they had that type of look. And with that being said, the half that were in condolence with them gave them the biggest hug, a, a nice group hug, while the rest of them just sat there in their couples. That would be Whitney and Matt, George and April, Sophie and Jonathan. They sat there thinking, shall we have a group hug? Yeah, it was Jonathan that said that. Shall we have a group hug? Yeah, he was taking the piss, as we know. Fast forward, we then... Had the honesty box continue with, who was it next? It was Whitney and Matt. So Whitney asked Matt, so Whitney asked Matt, what is your biggest regret from your time during this experiment? Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. And his answer to that was that he doesn't have any regrets. None whatsoever, he said. No regrets at all. But then we heard Shanita jump in to say, what, you don't have no regrets in regards to how you did Gemma? He did get off on one slightly, but then he calmed down and answered the question. And he said, I don't have any regrets marrying her. The only regret I have is how she was hurt from it. And I don't want to see anybody hurt. That's how he said it. Yeah. And with him saying that... We then heard Adrian pipe up and Adrian says, no, that's not completely right. Because the other day, when they were at the commitment ceremony on the couch, he piped up and said that their relationship was, was a fabrication. That's the word he used, fabrication. We then saw Matt defend himself by saying that everybody that day was coming for me and Whitney. So I was defending myself. And at the same time, Whitney turned around and said, it's always you lot have a habit of picking on us when it comes to our relationship, but we never say anything when it comes to yours. So what gives you the right to speak? That's virtually what she said. Then everything calmed down. Then the questions continued. Matt asked Whitney, what is the biggest change in you thanks to this process? And her answer was, she learned that vulnerability is a strength rather than a weakness. 
And as we know, she wasn't showing any vulnerability at the beginning. We all saw that. The way she was with Duca, the attitude, everything else as well. Yeah. She had her walls up. You couldn't penetrate that. It was ridiculous. But now we're seeing a whole different side to her. Yeah. But I still have my doubts. I still have my doubts. The attitude is still there. We just can't see it at the moment. It's hidden because it's Matt that she's dealing with. And right now, her and Matt are getting on. She's very smiley and giggly around Matt. Yeah, this is a whole new Whitney here. And Matt is making her happy. The last question they had was for the both of them. And the question was, what do you think the real reason is that some of the couples resented you, you two returning? And to be honest, we already know the answer to this. It's all about them two coming in as two separate marriages and their partners getting the raw end of the deal. Them two coming together as in picking each other, not having to work as hard as the original couples with the effort of making their marriages work. And these guys having an easy ride. That's virtually what it is. However, the word jealousy was used in that conversation, in that answer. And some people on the table weren't happy with that. We saw Zoe say something in regards to, that doesn't comply with me. I don't agree. So, yeah, it's, it's always Zoe and Matt. And then we heard Jenna speak saying that the word jealousy, no, I'm not, too, no, I wouldn't see it that way. No, we've had to work hard. I wouldn't call it jealousy here. And then we heard Whitney come behind her and say, I agree. It wasn't the right use of word in this context. That's what she said. And they squashed everything at that point. Ended the conversation. So moving on. The next couple to answer some questions were Sophie and Jonathan. And Sophie asked Jonathan, how certain are you that we have a future? And his answer was... I think I've been honest from the start. We're going to go out of this optimistic and, and we, we look forward to seeing where things go. And we're going to enjoy whatever happens. What type of answer was that? That was so generic. What type of answer was that? Oh, you know what? This guy, this guy. He talks about being honest. Honest where? That was no honest answer. You don't normally have a filter. So why use it on this occasion? Oh, you know what? I can't, I can't. Move it on. It was now his turn to ask Sophie a question. Am I the partner you wanted? Be honest with me. The cheeky bugger. He tells her to be honest with him. But he wasn't honest with her. The bloody cheeky bugger. But anyway, she did answer the question. She said, you're probably not what I wanted. She came in with, the, with clear goals of she wanted somebody on the, on the same trajectory as her in regards to goals, ambition, lifestyle, etc. And she continued to say, But equally, you know, I wanted someone that wanted to love me. Someone that I could trust and someone that I felt like I was safe and comfortable with. You do all of that. But a lot of what this process is, it's not necessarily what you want, but it's what you need. So yeah, probably not what I wanted. But I'm not disappointed in the slightest. That's bad. Yes, her reply was nice. Why couldn't you do the same? Why couldn't you do the same? Oh yeah, I know why. Because you're not into her. Because you're not really into her. You don't have the lust and the sexual attraction that you were talking about at the beginning. You don't have that for her. But you're still playing like, yeah, there's potential. You can grow into it. You know that's not the case. You're lying now. And you talk about being truthful. 
You're lying now. And Sophie, they were really nice words. They really were. But for the wrong person. He's not the one. You're flogging a dead horse here. You know you are. You know you are. You should have listened to your father. Moving on. The next lot of questions were for April and George. And the question was asked from George to April. Do you trust me? Yeah, we're here again. About the trust thing. We're here again. Her answer was short and sweet. She said she trusted him before he trusted her. Simple. Then the question was asked in the opposite way. From April to George. Do you trust her? Do you trust me? And his reply was, Very slow in coming. It was very slow in coming. He had to really think about that. The whole table's looking to think, oh, What's the pause for? Why is he pausing? Why is he pausing? Then he eventually speaks and says, I do trust you. I just, I don't trust myself to let go. And I will be patient as long as you need me to be. I will. Again, we saw George get emotional. The trust thing is still an issue as far as I'm concerned. As his mother said, it's not about the kids that are the problem. It's you, George. It's you. So we, we know he's got issues here. Uh, and I'm, I, I hate when my girl, what's her name, April, keeps telling him she'll always be there, she'll always be there. Oh, please stop promising. Please stop doing that. He's going to fall down with a big bang if it doesn't work out. And that's what upsets me about this whole, you promising you'll be there, I'll always be there, George. Stop it. Stop it. Anyway, just to bring it back, the question was then asked of the both of them, who is the fakest couple on this table? Yes, that was the question they got. Who is the fakest couple on this table? There was some hesitation. Eventually we heard Thomas speak up and say, I'm not going to take offence if you think that we're the fakest couple on this table. Not going to take offence at all, he said. And I was quite surprised by that. I thought, oh, is that you, Thomas? Is that you, Thomas, speaking? So eventually they turned around and said, OK, you and Adrian. Yeah, that was their answer. Thomas and Adrian. But then we heard April say the only reason why we picked you was because of what Matt said at the commitment ceremony. Yeah. About their relation being a fabrication. Yeah. We're there again. We're there again. And with that being said, you saw Adrian this time pipe up and say, yeah, let's, let's just clear that up, by the way. Let's clear that up, by the way. Oh, he was on one. He was definitely on one now. Because I think he just wanted to get a few things off his chest before he left that day. Before he left the process. He wanted to get a few things off his chest. And that's what we saw next. If there's any one person in this world who is going to tell me that I didn't work my ass off, it most certainly will not be someone who didn't give his a day. So as far as I'm concerned, your feelings do not matter no. to me. Well, as you can see, Adrian wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. And the good thing I like about Adrian, he only speaks when he's really got something to say. And he's very good at articulating what he has to say. But as we know, this is Married at First Sight. The programme's not a programme without drama. So here comes the drama. I'm not interested in any of that. Thomas, you're not interested in fucking whoa, nothing whoa, but yourself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't shout it. Don't shout it. No, 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 no. I'm fucking sober today. Don't shout it. Who the fuck are you talking to? Come on. 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 Come on
can we all just yeah. stop this? Shit. You're a fucking joke, kid. I know, and you're a <laughs> massive joke. G.I. fucking joke. Jesus Christ, just stop it. No one was going to be able to calm this rabble down. It wasn't going to happen. Even George trying to quiet everyone down. George, sit down. Just sit down. Just, just, just let it happen. It's been brewing for so long. Just, just let it happen. Adrian's just had it up to here. He's just had it up to here. Let him blow. Just let him blow. I actually thought you were more articulate than this and more I am the very articulate. man, but I'm clearly what? Do you know what, Whitney? Do you know what the tiny little bit that makes me kind of sad is we've had so many conversations. Yeah, we've had like two conversations, but yeah. Fuck you know what? Fuck off. Who the fuck are you talking to, man? Nah, we I don't want to talk you to you. Fuck off. Because now you're threatening right. Oh, hang on. Go on, then. Now you're threatening I'm threatening. Threaten. 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 You tell me how I'm threatened. Go on, then, mate. Go on. As you can see, Adrian wasn't backing down. Not today. Today of all days, not today. Do you know what? I have literally respected you so much throughout this whole thing, and you show me none. So actually, you're done. Um, we would never fuck off, Whitney. Really. Okay. Adrian. Oh well, I think that was a mic drop. Adrian has left the building. He's done. He's done. The party done. So on that note, this is where I'm going to leave it. If you like what you heard, please like, comment and subscribe. Till next time.